it feels weird to be so jubilant over getting a preacher elected, doesn't it? I mean, don't get me wrong. I, I, it's way closer than it should have been. And the very fact that Herschel Walker vampire hunter got within 100,000 votes of the Senate should shame our nation to the 12th generation. But holy shit, did I breathe a sigh of relief when it became clear that Warnock was going to win it, right? I, I was so excited, in fact, that I stuck around for his victory speech, which I almost never do, right? Those things are always so rote and so boring. But I was pretty emotionally invested in this one. And from what I've heard before, Warnock is a pretty impressive order. So I stuck around. And look, I, I get that he's an ordained minister with 11 siblings from rural Georgia whose middle name is Gamaliel, right? I know the good lords are coming as soon as he starts talking. I'm not caught off guard by it. But that doesn't mean that when 11 words into his speech, if you don't count the crowd work, we got to a, to God be the glory, I wasn't disappointed. I was instead reminded that light years ahead of his competitor, though he is, he still leaves a lot for a rationalist to desire. Now, don't, don't get me wrong. I, I don't really take issue with the way that Senator Warnock invoked his religion in his acceptance speech, by and large. Right? He started off with some silly shit about how this victory is a reminder that, quote, we pray not only with our lips, but with our legs, end quote. It's, it's a funny way of saying, don't expect the magic I sell you to actually work, though. You have to, you have to actually do all this shit for yourself. The, the only other time he got really religious was, was in this bit where he said, and I'll just I'll quote him again, quote, I believe that democracy is the political enactment of a spiritual idea, the notion that each of us has within us a spark of the divine. We all have value. And if we have value, we ought to have a voice, end quote. And like, it's it's not that. <laughs> That's not why. Like, democracy is the enactment of a secular idea, and it only works when it is that, and we all recognize it. But, but fine, you know, okay, you know, I'll set aside my issue with the sentiment. Like, if you... You know, if your undying love for Battlestar Galactica cosplay inspired you to be a good senator, I wouldn't mind you bringing that up in a speech. So sure, have at it, man. Your favorite fictional character inspires you to legislate, whatever. But the one time that he brought up religion where it really echoed the loudest for me were those first few words. That bit when he humbly offered up all the glory to God. I mean, that's hardly unique to Raphael Warnock. So I'm, I'm certainly not faulting him above other politicians for it. It's a shibboleth of humility that damn near every American politician in my lifetime indulges in. Right? It's a clarification that pious people wield like a sword. Oh, don't give me any other credit. Give it to God. I'm too humble to accept any accolades for my own accomplishments. So instead, I'll remind everybody that the creator of the goddamn universe and governor of divine justice personally intervened on my behalf to ensure them. I mean, how much less humble can you possibly be? Oh, it's not me. It's the fact that the very giver of life and meaning decided I was better than my opponent. I mean, don't get me wrong. If, if there was a God, he would certainly prefer Raphael Warnock to Herschel Walker. I, I, I feel pretty confident about that. But it's not exactly the declaration of selflessness they seem to think it is when they say it. Instead, it's a way of saying, if you think I deserve accolades and applause now, wait until you see how humble I am. And it should be treated accordingly. Right? Because here's the thing. With very few exceptions, nothing is an individual effort. Right. If you're standing up on a stage or in front of a microphone or whatever, and, and you're in one of those positions where a Christian might offer the glory to God, there are almost certainly a whole fuck ton of non-fictional people more deserving of that praise. And you're taking it away from them on God's behalf. Right. Real people made this shit happen, not Bronze Age deities. And yes, of course, Warnock thanked his family and his campaign staff and the volunteers and the voters and all that shit. But first and foremost, above everybody else, he thanked God. He thanked an imaginary being that exists only in his own head, which means that first and foremost, he thanked himself. So, yeah. Stoked that Raphael Warnock secured another six years in the Senate, but mostly because of the two choices I was given, he was the one most likely to move the needle away from a place where every goddamn politician in the country feels the need to thank a magical ghost every time they win a goddamn election.